So here we have Eduardo Carpentier um, trying to apply a hammer lock, which Luthez then reverses into his own hammer lock. And for a little bit of time in there, that hammer lock is supplemented by um, like a one armed rear naked choke. So this is a, something very similar to what we see when one player tries to apply a Kimura, aka double wrist lock, to another, and the defending player is able to move the angle of their own body so that their double wrist lock becomes your double wrist lock. And for a moment here, Luthez actually has a double wrist lock, but he does turn it into a hammer lock, aka chicken wing, supplemented by that one-armed rear naked choke, and turns the whole thing into a throw. Now, if this wasn't an unscripted match, could he have finished the whole thing from that hammer lock and choking position? Yes, I absolutely think so. Um, if not from the choke, although that, there, there's at least a possibility there, if not from the choke, then from a really aggressive yank on the hammer lock, driving the defending hand all the way up between the shoulder blades without having to get his man belly down? Yes, I think so. And the factor that keeps him from having to drive his opponent belly down is that one-handed rear naked choke. And the problem with these hammer locks, as you can see, is without that reinforced double wrist grip that um, is in the double wrist lock as opposed to just a pure hammer lock, the defending player has a lot more mobility to move around. Um, the reinforced grip in the double wrist lock is just so much stronger, and that's why we rarely see the hammer lock in modern grappling competitions. Although you will see it from time to time, it's rare but it's still viable in certain situations. And you see a lot of players using it from guard, for example, like they kind of adapted it there. Like a, someone playing guard will reach behind for the opponent's arm and then kind of like drive it up behind. Or you might see someone using it as a component in a guard pass. Um, a lot of my friends were doing that for a long time. But in, in any case, what we see here is that both hammer locks and double wrist locks have this inherent vulnerability where if there's no sufficient pinning mechanic, the defending player can turn their lock, uh, like their opponent's lock, into their own lock. So the opponent's lock becomes the player's lock. And that's what we see here. There's too much of an open door because the pinning mechanic wasn't aggressive enough or the application of the punishment hold wasn't aggressive enough. And that's also likely because this is a scripted match. So this is all definitely real adversarial grappling applicable. Um, I would just say that if you're going for either the hammer lock or a two-on-one grip, like in a Kimura or a double wrist lock, which is basically the same name for the same technique, I would just say make sure your pinning mechanics are better than they're exhibiting here. Um, because I think deliberately they're not pinning their, their man well so that he can get up and so that the theatrical action can continue. But when we do it in actual combative grappling, we want to make sure that we're either using our knees or other parts of our body to actively pin our opponent so that they can't do what Luthez does here and have a high degree of mobility where they can then switch the lock that they're defending against into their own lock. 